to the angel of the church in Philadelphia right. These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Verse 11, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is to the church of Philadelphia. Revelation 3. And, and I know that, that those that live here or that were intercessors or worshipers, you may know that verse very well, but I wanted to read it because I... Living in Pennsylvania for seven years, I, I loved coming to, to this city. Not ever because it was the, the biggest crowds or, or, or the biggest churches or the biggest ministries, but because the people that were here were hardcore. Got a, a few amens. I mean, I mean, listen, you're talking about the only, you're talking about the only NFL stadium that has a prison inside of it. Is Philadelphia. <laughs> and, and I just feel like, I feel this word in my spirit, and I, I want to, I'm going to have Jay come, and I want him to pray and minister too, but I feel like this word, like, hold on. Like, hold on. Hold on. The hour of his appearing is soon. And I was thinking about the prayer and worship that's been going on over here with Jamie and so many musicians and worshipers that's been going on over here since Tuesday and thinking about their three chords through the night. Sometimes not always the best sound because you barely have a voice in the middle of the night. And I was thinking about how the, the endurance and the tenacity moves the heart of God. And if there's anything America needs right now, it's Christians that are gonna rise up and hold on. We can't let go. There's a spirit of hopelessness that has come on the church. We gotta break free from it. God is who he says he is. He's going to do what he said he will do. And I love it how it says in the book of John, it says, or, or Luke, it says, and we love this verse in the prayer movement, you know, will you not cry out day and night? Will I not grant justice to those who cry out day and night, Luke 18, but it says this, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Is he gonna find relevant Christianity? cool kid Christianity, mega church Christianity, or is he going to find faith? Is he going to find people that are holding on to the gospel, holding on to truth, and refuse to bow to the powers of the age? See, the Let Us Worship movement, it's less to do with an anti-government or anti-lockdown thing. People make it about that. 
It's a lot less to do about that. And I would encourage anybody that is suspicious, go back and watch 170 of our events. They're all archived on Facebook. Watch everything we sing and everything we say. It's not about anti-government or anti-lockdown or political. It's about standing on the truth of what God said and being unwavering in our faith. It's about healing and restoration and revival. It's about awakening. It's about salvation. It's about the breaking off of addictions. It's about the confusion over a generation of their sexuality to be broken and redeemed. And I feel like the Lord is speaking over this city and over America tonight. This is a word for America. Hold on. Don't give up. Don't let go. He's coming soon. It's not like Jesus is like waiting to see if his poll numbers will increase before he returns. It's not up for public opinion. He's coming soon. And he's looking for a people. He's looking for a church that's willing to receive him. He's looking for, he's looking for the body that he died for. The one that's bold, the one that will stand, the one that will proclaim the gospel. He's looking for those that will throw off disappointment. We've had a lot of opportunity to be disappointed and discouraged. But every single night when God shows up like he is tonight, I am filled with hope again. I want to read that one more time and then I want Jay to come. We're going to have a moment for the Lord. Verse 11. Again, I'm not making this up. It says, to the church of Philadelphia. Verse 11, it says, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one can take your crown. This is what inspired this movement. Listen. I'm holding on to my worship. Governor Newsom, you ain't taking my worship. The governor of New York, you're not taking my worship. Whatever your wolf or whatever his name is, you ain't taking my worship. Sorry, dude, it's not yours. That's not a political thing, that's biblical. Hold on to what you have so that no one can take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of my city of my God, the new Jerusalem. I believe tonight, and I don't, I don't have any tattoos, so I can't speak from experience, but Jay, Jay's the tattooed gangster. He's got let us worship on his arm, you know? I feel like tonight God is like tattooing people. Like, I mean, come on, I mean, give me a break. Just, that's gonna go on YouTube and people are gonna be like, let us worship the tattoo cult. No, I mean, in the spirit, God is placing his brand, his identity on you again. He's saying, you are mine and the world can't have you. You are mine and this perverted culture cannot claim you. You are mine, and TikTok cannot own you. You are mine. 